This is TV Black Box, bringing you the inside goss from the TV industry. G'day friends, it's Mulk here uh, with my very first hands-on with the new Hubble device from Foxtel. Now this is their new very slim, very light um, external device. Please don't call it a puck. It's called a Hubble. Uh, and it is designed to fit into your lounge room and make your dumb TV smart and make your smart TV experience even smarter. Let, let's just call that for what it is. Now, off the top, I'm going to tell you that if you own a Google Chromecast or a Fetch Mini or an Apple TV, this is not for you. Not yet, maybe. Uh, but certainly if you are well embedded into those environments, lean into them. Keep loving them. Keep doing them. This is for people that don't have those things, or even an Amazon Fire Stick, by the way. Hubble is for people that don't have those things. Or if they've got um, a dumb TV, they want to make it smart. Or if they're sick of the smart TV interface and having to you know, get around in that and not have much like being able to do anything or find anything. And this is the real push from Foxtel. They talk about days that we spend in a year searching for stuff to watch. The Hubble interface is designed to bring it all into your face. Copyright mark. As you can see from this unboxing situation, it's pretty slick. They've done a really great job making it look together and function together. There's all nice foldy bits and it, you know, echoes the, the Hubble logo. Um, you'll see the, the remote looks nice. The, the puck itself looks great. Out of the box, I've said really small, really functional and really critically on the back there, there are only four ports. Let's get the flare off it. Only four ports. Really simple. We've got an antenna. We've got an Ethernet port. We've got a HDMI port. And we've got our power. That is literally it. Color-coded to make it as idiot-proof as possible. Now, one of the first things straight away that people have asked me, and I'll lean into this a little bit more in a second, Mulk, do I need an antenna to make it go? No. Foxtel are absolutely reminding us, Hubble are reminding us that this is two plugs and you are done. Power, HDMI, that's it. I will do a bigger conversation around Hubble Glass, which is their TV product when it comes out, when I get my hands on it. Um, but for this device, just to make it go, you need to plug it into power, you need to plug it into HDMI, and it is functional. Inside this box um, is a pretty neat little bit of kit. It's got a 16 gig um, flash hard drive. It's got four gig of RAM, 802.11x Wi-Fi, AX Wi-Fi, plus, of course, the Ethernet port. Um, it only runs 60 hertz through um, the HDMI. If you're looking for something other than that, you're out of luck. That's just how it is. Um, it, it is not super user, user configurable. It is designed to be pull it out of the box and make it go. It is um, running Entertainment OS, which is the proprietary operating system that they have functioning to make this thing go, uh, built off the back of Sky's experience using the similar thing and uh, the Comcast Zumo. Same thing, friends. Just call it a different thing. Um, it works really well. I found the biggest hurdle when you start is that you have to sign into everything, everything. If you want it to work well, you want to be signed in. Now, particularly if you haven't plugged in the antenna to, fo to, to get access to any of the free-to-air networks in Australia, ABC, SBS, 7, 9, 10, you will have to sign into the apps. They're all preloaded. Everything's fine like that. But you have to sign into everything. And generally they're pretty good put in your email address or it comes up with a you know here's a link type this into your browser on your phone or on your laptop sign in and it's done does it remotely um sbs um, is a little bit on my shit list because i had to put my whole email address in there and netflix is completely on my shit list because you have to put your whole freaking email and password in with a little just using the remote just little you know move it about blah 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 that's useless. Pain in the bum. Much prefer that. Here is a screen or a scan, a QR code, log in, heaps better. But that's not Hubble's fault. That is absolutely the end result fault. If you want to watch free to air television with no antenna plugged in, you will have to sign into those apps because they utilize the IP streams that are available. And then bang, everything is functional available to you. You can build up watch lists. I really like this because not only can I have a watch list, but there's a general device watch list. So anyone casually what it walks up and do it. Uh, and individuals, you can have up to six, I think it is, five or six different watch lists. And you can have shows that you share across watch lists. So for example, my son and I like to watch The Bad Batch together. Um, we can put that into both our watch lists and it keeps track of who's watched ahead of you. 
maybe not a great thing. Uh, but, you know, you can see that I can put a show in for the whole family to watch in a casual viewing situation or just for our each for our individual watch lists. And you can dive through and scroll through all of them. The rails are going to be your friends. Get to know that. We're used to that now. These sort of sideways scrolling rails um, to be able to get to all of the content. That's really important. Build up your favorites list. Uh, once you've got the, the free to wear network function stuff happening, you can build favorites and all those sorts of things. I go into a deep dive about how the, the free to wear versus the, the terrestrial over the air antenna versus the um, uh, IP stream stuff goes. There'll be a deep dive video. This is really just want to touch on the, the high points. Um, the remote's actually pretty good. It's It's got a bit of weight in it, but it's not like metal metal like thing. Piffable, very easily throwable at the dog. Um, it doesn't have a whole bunch of buttons. I'm sorry about this. Let's get the glare off it. But it does have three really important buttons that you'll see if I can get the light out of the way. Down here. There we go. KO, binge, Netflix. Straight off the bat. So you can, you will have all of this content made available to you in Rails, but you still can go into the apps. So all of the stuff is there. You can get to it pretty easily in just a couple of clicks and you're watching television. But you then also have the deep dive capability to go into the Netflix app, to go into the binge app, into the 7 Plus or 9 Now apps and find or do the content you want to do. Uh, I need to correct something. Um, I said that, and this is a truth, at the front end, the IP streamed fast channels are not visible to you in, in the front of house kind of function, the main home screens of Hubble. When you go into the 10 Play app, everything, all of the fast channels are there to watch. And that's great. So you can get into that, but they're just not at the very front where I would want to see them. And I know that they're talking about wanting to build that to make that happen. Um, voice search is central to this, that little blue button right there in the middle. Um, press and hold to talk. It took me a couple of goes to really have to press and hold to get it to go. And even my stupid voice and the way that I talk worked really well. It was just super functional. It understood what I was trying to say most of the time. Uh, and it, it did a, a pretty good job of it. It does allow for closed captioning if you're somebody that needs that, even audio description where it's available. So you can turn those functions on in a global settings context uh, or on a channel by channel basis where that's a thing. Um, stacking is really important. Bring You can subscribe in Hubble for your accounts. So if you don't have, for example, a KO Sports or a Disney Plus or a Netflix account, who are you, first of all? Secondly, Sign up in the thing and you get benefit from subscribing through Hubble. So if you've got, as an example, Binge and KO and Netflix, three apps, you have to pay you know, whatever those prerequisite amounts are for the level of the app that you've signed up for. But by subscribing through Hubble, you get a $5 per month discount off the total bill. That's really smart. If you go for four accounts, it's 10. If you go for five, and right now that actually isn't possible because that would involve KO and uh, Binge and Flash and Lifestyle, which is yet to launch, and Netflix. So they're the five apps that are available. Disney Plus, of course, they want you to sign in. It's not into the stacking thing. Prime Video, same that sign in, not in the stacking thing. Um, same with uh, Apple TV Plus all of those sorts of things. You can sign into them and trust me, it's worth it for you to sign in because it allows you to get all of that functionality built in and the smarts in Hubble start to learn what you want to watch. The mix of here's the stuff in all my streamers and here's the stuff on free to wear or, or via the catch up services. On that, if you're someone that likes recording TV and watching it to jump through the ads and those sorts of things, Hubble is not going to help you out because it is built into it. Now, obviously, um, if you subscribe to uh, the cheapest Netflix tier, which has ads, can't get rid of them. If you um, have a subscription level that doesn't have ads in your binge or whatever, no ads. Great. For the free-to-air networks, it's their bread and butter. So they are built into your experience. Whether you are watching via catch-up, you will get your pre-roll and mid-roll ads. Cannot avoid them. Um, and if you're watching via IP streams or terrestrial, of course, the ads are there. There is no recording. Everything is about catch up IP streaming, using the internet to watch your television. So don't come into this if you want to record and jump through ads. It's just not possible. There's no physically no fast forward button. Play, pause. That's it. There are, of course, scrolly features. You can fast forward using the, the, the main dial in the center, um, but it's not, it's not going to skip you through ads. That's the short answer uh, of that. 
what did I what did I like about it? The experience once you've signed in and bring a packed lunch to do that, it's really good. It's it's an interface that you will get used to really quickly. Um, there is a learned learning curve to get across through it, but it's not an impossible one. Um, it's a, a, it's a pretty funky device out of the box. I like the watch list features no end. I signed into all of my things and stuff just started being able to work. And I know that as I use it and watch stuff on it more and more and more, that it will become um, more central to my viewing thing. And I compare this at the moment to the TV that I've got it plugged into just here off screen, a Hubble and a Fetch Mighty. So I, and then I have a whole bunch of apps on that smart TV that I used to funk to, to, to watch Apple TV plus to watch Paramount plus to do all of those sorts of things. This is going to be my, I'm testing it to, to see how it goes for a month, a couple of months. And I think it's going to be hard to get me back off this, particularly once I have a Hubble glass in the house to test, because what I have set up on here transfers over to it. It's, it's just tr amazing. Just works between the two of them. And I really like that. And I do want to test if the watch lists carry across. I believe they do. I can't tell you that for sure. But if you've got multiple Hubbles in the house, it's beneficial in that regard. Things I didn't like. Some of the sign-in bullshit was pretty crap. I didn't like the way that went. I think they've missed an opportunity on the remote. In the center of the dial, there's your basically your OK button. I would have put a Hubble logo in it. Like just put that little green, little funny, you know, circular star thing in the middle of it. There is a little, you can barely see it at the top, the Hubble kind of etched into the, the remote. Um, but yeah, it, it just misses that, like that's something that I would have clicked on. <sighs> Sorting out my favorites when we get into that in the deep dive video was just a, a massive clickety click, click, click pain in the ass. Horrible. But that's as much me because I wanted to set up all of the, um, free to wear accounts on their free to wear numbers because there is numbers at the bottom. So you can, if you want to get to, you know, channel seven, 70, you want to get to channel nine, 90, not 107 or 109. I'm not used to that. I don't live in Foxtel, Foxtel land. It takes some setup, but you can make that go. Um, out of the box, all of the free to wear networks, um, binge, all of the Foxtel apps, of course, binge, KO, Flash, and coming soon, Lifestyle, um, Netflix, Disney Plus. Apple TV Plus, Prime Video, um, they're all there and sign into them and it's worth it. You just get that transparent audio and the recommendations that come through and all of that sort of stuff. And there are real humans behind it, giving those editorial suggestions as much as the algorithm learning you're watching stuff. At launch, they have said that coming, it's being worked on, but it's not yet given a, a delivery date. Stan, Paramount Plus and Optus Sport. They're all coming soon, but you just can't access. They're not even there now. All of the apps are preloaded, so that will come in a little individual release. Um, I think that Hubble is going to be, it's going to scratch an itch. As I said, it's not for everybody. It's not for people that are deep down sort of tech. I have technical solutions. I want VPNs. If you know what a VPN is, Hubble is not for you. Um, if you are someone who likes watching a million Plex things, well, look, if you're watching them through um, 10 Play, fine. You'll just have to go to the 10 play app. If you want to access all of Plex as a Plex app, Crunchyroll, none of that stuff. Second tier, Hey You, BritBox, none of that yet. They are talking to and working with some of those providers to make that happen, but it's not a thing just yet. It's coming. And look, with the fact that it's literally like I'm recording this on the 4th of March, it is a week out from it being publicly available. Foxtel have teased this for quite some time. Finally, we get to see their big secret project, Hubble, come to life. And it's come to life in a pretty good, you know, it's been animated well. It's bringing to us all of the things that they said it would, and it does it reliably so far. I've used it for about a couple of hours to set it up and film things that you've seen intercut with this video and into the deep dive. Hubble, you can pre-order it right now from hubble.com.au for 99 of your Australian dollars. Or you can buy it direct, walk into a store, pick it up in a box from JB Hi-Fi or Harvey Norman. Should you do it? Yep. Particularly if you've got a dumb TV and you want to make it smart or you're changing up the technology in your lounge room and you want to integrate your ability to search and find and discover and just not spend time looking for something to watch. This will give you a whole heap of stuff. It will probably, oh, sorry, it's 99 bucks up front. And then it's the cost of all of your streaming apps. 
If you don't sign in any of them and you just want to use it for free-to-air television, fine. But why did you not just plug in your smart TV and do that? I mean, it does give you the catch-up stuff. That's fine. The real integrated feature, the function, the full function of this is absolutely benefited from when you sign into your apps. And that's where your costs will start to lift indiscreetly because you wanted to be able to make this happen and um, integrate Netflix and Disney Plus and Stan and all of those sorts of things when they're functional for you. Hubble. They say that it is TV streaming made easy. And look, it is once you've signed into every thing. It's great. I say, I say, check it out. Uh, but this is it. I'm Malk from TV Black Box, and that has been my very big, very long-winded introduction to Hubble. <laughs>